I've been crocheting for almost a year now and it's been great. I've made clothing and plushies and some blankets and a shawl. It's been amazing. I love it. It's just starting to get expensive. So naturally I started thinking what I bet every crocheter and knitter eventually thinks. Could I make my own yarn? The logic is of course that you can buy enough processed wool to spin a skein of yarn for much cheaper than just buying that yarn from a store. You just have to spin it yourself. So I've been thinking about spinning wool for actually longer than I've been crocheting again, but that's another story. Anyway, I found out that a relatively new friend of mine actually already spins their own wool. They've been doing it for years and I asked them about it and they said they'd be willing to teach me and even lend me supplies. So of course I jumped at that opportunity. I went over to their place and my friend very helpfully explained the entire process. They demonstrated spinning on their spinning wheel and let me give it a try, but it was too too much for someone who knew nothing about the actual process. So they very graciously let me try out one of their beginning drop spindles and again explained the technique and showed me how I could go step by step to spin instead of having to figure out everything with the spinning wheel all at once. The steps are really interesting. So first you spin what's called a ply, I believe, which is just one bunch of wool that's been spun to store kinetic energy. And then you roll that up and then you spin another ply. Or you just spin one long ply and then spin them together to create the yarn. Once I had managed to make a little bit of extremely lumpy ply, my friend taught me how to spin it into yarn using a technique called the Andean ply and then twisting the plies together. And so I had yarn and I was able to crochet with it. It was lumpy and bumpy and different sizes and a bit weird, but I mean, it worked. Now I just had to make more. For a few weeks, I tried to keep spinning the white wool that my friend very graciously gave me to practice with, but I just couldn't figure it out. And then serendipitously, a local yarn store had a drop spindle class. I was provided with some beautiful wool and I brought the drop spindle that my friend lent me and an expert from the local spinning guild. <laughs> yes, there's a local spinning guild. Taught us how to use drop spindle. It was a lot of what I had already heard from my friend, but repetition just made it make more sense, especially after I'd been practicing for so many weeks. With all of that, my technique had gotten so much better, but it still hadn't really clicked. My friend had warned me that spinning wool is all about muscle memory, and I just hadn't figured it out yet. But then, one day... Hi, so I have been trying to learn how to spin wool into yarn for like months now, and I finally had like an epiphany earlier this week where I figured out how to do it like properly and comfortably, which has been a big thing because the way that I was doing it before actually kind of hurt my back. But this method, I mean, I've clearly been super productive with it. So I'm going to show you what I do and then I'm going to take this and put it onto like a makeshift bobbin and then I'm going to start spinning a different color wool and I'm just so excited. I've been spinning while, while watching TV instead of crocheting, which I was doing instead of using apps on my phone. Anyway, so you start holding it like this and you want it to spin clockwise. And you put your other finger there, you pull with this finger, you place it and you let the spin, you let the twist go up. Wool is surprisingly strong is what I will say. No, I promise I'm getting better at this. Okay, I'm back. I have a hair tie on my wrist. And so what I'm gonna do with this, I'm going to take the tail and stick it in here <laughs> so that it keeps the rest of the wool <laughs> away. Okay, spinning, pull, yeah, pull. Huh. No, 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 don't do it, don't break. I'm usually sitting down so I'm not as scared about fully dropping the drop spindle. It's really amazing how just like how much wool you're able to pull determines how thick it is. I figured it out. Then when you have too much and your arm is getting tired, like mine is right now, you take it and you just spin it up like this, hook it back on again, start from the beginning. I'm not an expert, I'm just learning. It was the wildest thing. I couldn't, I could not figure it out. And then it just clicked. So yeah, progress is being made. I'm learning a new skill. 
it takes work, it takes muscle memory, but I'm finally feeling like I'm making progress and that I can try something new. And by something new, I mean, instead of just taking this and spinning it against itself and turning it into yarn, I'm going to do this whole thing again with some other wool that I have, and I'm gonna spin it into two-tone yarn. I guess barber shop stripe yarn. It's so satisfying. I'm just genuinely so excited. And yeah, I'll give you another update soon. It's been a while, but I am finally ready to spin these individual plies of wool into yarn. <laughs> to prep for this, I grabbed my paper towel holder. It is plastic and it is pretty heavy down here, so I'm hoping that it can hold on to the individual toilet paper roll bobbins that I made as I pull the yarn and spin it together using the drop spindle. This is still the sturdy drop spindle that my friend lent to me. I'm gonna have to buy one of my own, I think, at this point. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is a lead piece of yarn. I believe the point of the lead is to be a good starting point for the spin. Like somehow the spin that is imbued in the yarn somehow transfers to the ply. Uh, I use it when I'm just spinning the ply as well. I think it's also helpful because I need to start from like further away. So I have the ends of the two plies here. You can see they're trying to spin together. Awesome. I'm going to tie the top into a knot. Nice little knot between the two there. As always, I am not perfect with this. I am learning and just sharing that learning with you. <laughs> Blue, red. Okay. Oh no. Okay. I think we're good to go now. So holding it like this and then we're just going to let it twist together what it naturally wants to do. Wow. Oh my gosh, the striping is gorgeous. So what I'm kind of trying to do here is just pull it taut so that the yarn is even, and then it can sort of undo the potential energy that was already in there. Oh, this is so beautiful. It's so interesting because it's like a very dark red and a very light blue, and it, it still it kind of looks purple when you look at it all wound together. Good morning. It did take a few days, but uh, I did eventually get this. The way that I was trying to spin was definitely not the recommended way. Definitely don't put both of your uh, ply rolls on the same thing. They tangled together so many times. Uh, the other lesson that I learned is that if you spin your ply too thin, sometimes it'll snap. So there are two parts on here where there's just blue and no red, but you know, nothing I make is perfect. I'm not an expert, I'm just learning. So you might ask, Shayna, what are you going to do with this beautiful yarn that you've spun yourself? And I did not have an answer for a while, but a few months ago I did start to crochet this beautiful shawl. I'll link the pattern on Ravelry down below and you'll see it's all these beautiful different colors. Um, this is all homespun yarn, uh, but it is not yarn that I spun because again, the, the summation of my yarn spinning is this. This is all homespun yarn that my friend who taught me to spin just gave me. And I decided why not make something beautiful and lovely out of it. So it's super colorful and super fun. And I just think at the border, it would be very beautiful in some blue and purple yarn. Uh, I'm going to do that today while I wake up. I'm very excited to finish this shawl and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Once I finished crocheting the shawl, I remembered something called water blocking that I'd heard about. 
I asked my friend about it and they recommended soaking the shawl in lukewarm water for 15 minutes and then rolling it up in a towel to blot out the water and then hanging it up to dry. And now it's time to take a look at the finished shawl. So here it is. I absolutely love it. It's oh, it's so beautiful. The water blocking really helped make all the pure wool much softer. There's still some puckering, but what can you do? Obviously, the yarn that I spun myself isn't perfect. There are lots of places in the shawl where you can see it's too thin or it was spun a little bit too much. As I said before, there are some parts where the red fly broke, and I'm sure if I looked a little bit, it wouldn't be too hard to find it. But that doesn't matter to me because it's amazing and it's wonderful and I love it and it keeps me so warm. Honestly, I think I'm going to wear this to my sister-in-law's wedding this fall. I think it's going to be absolutely perfect. So what does this mean for me in terms of continuing to spin? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't know how much I spoke about her earlier in the video, but I actually like pulled a muscle in my shoulder pec area doing the drop spindle spinning. It was just a lot on my body. I know it hurt my back even before I actually pulled something, but I do love doing it. It is amazing and the product can't be argued with. The yarn that my friend spun that's all these different colors, it looks gorgeous. It's unlike anything I can buy in a store. So I'd really like to find a solution and that might just be giving a spinning wheel another try again, but that's going to have to wait for a different video. Thank you so, so much for following along on my spinning wheel journey. If you've reached this point in the video, then please consider subscribing. I make a ton of videos about crafty things and baking and just a bunch of wholesome, cozy content about discovering new stuff to fill my time. If you've tried spinning wool, I would love to hear what your experience was like with it. Did you find a way to deal with any back or shoulder issues? If you have any resources for buying wool or finding a good spinning wheel, please drop them down below. And until next time, cheers.